So, oh, it's so nice to relax. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just move that. I know that feeling. Me. You do, huh? <laughs> well, we've had a... Hey, I was really impressed with your... what you've done for seniors. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, the thing for seniors is um, I'm going to be teaching teachers to be working with seniors. So teaching... teaching I'm teaching them refle reflexology, foot, hand face and uh, yeah foot hand face reflexology and uh, they're going to be working with seniors in residences so they're going to go to to the residence that like just for like example, amica is a residence like where you live yeah it's, it's and there is already place. somebody here doing chair massage and reflexology from them what a great idea it's a great idea it's a captured market too i mean come on I mean, these people need this stuff these people need this um they, some of them know about it, but they never called reflexology. Refle they called it the foot lady. Ah! You know. Uh, because, oh, wait a minute, wasn't that the woman that, that was before you, that taught you, an old German? Uh, was that was Mrs. Kennedy. Right, 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 Irish. right, right. Yes, yes, yes. Old German, okay. <laughs> and, but did they not ta call her the foot lady? She was the foot lady, but... But doesn't every province have the foot lady? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, so you've you've put together a wonderful uh, array of powerpoints. Holy smokes! Uh, it, I'm so proud of it. It's, it, it it's, just explains everything. Yeah. So take us from okay. So the first part of it is explaining what 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 the are, first what part talking? in the first part I'm explaining a little bit about what reflexology is, why it would be effective for seniors, how they're going to benefit from them, uh, from from it I should say. And um, explaining seniors to them, because I am one. So I can tell them things that they might not know. Because seniors, example. for example, seniors are have a tendency towards depression. All their friends are dying. Uh -huh. their, fa their mates have died. Life is no longer has a future. When you're young, you have a future. You have a present, you have a future. They have a past and a present, but they don't have a future, and they know they don't have a future. And th now I'm not saying everybody. I personally have a future. I don't care if I die tomorrow. Yeah. I have a future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my brain thinks that way, but theirs doesn't. Very theirs is very much every day. How are you doing? I uh, can't talk about it. You know. uh, so so. So how does how does foot reflexology help in depression? Can you tell me a little bit? A little bit about that. Well, first of all, what is depression? It's depression. It's a lack of hope to me. It's a lack of hope, but it's also different organs that aren't working properly, different brain chemicals that aren't working properly. Things that are depressed. Yeah, huh? yeah. Uh, so the adrenal glands are involved. All of the. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of the. Uh, dopamine and. Uh, Yes. What's that other one? Your happy drugs. Yeah. All those things are not functioning as well as they used to be. You know, even things like CoQ10 are involved. Mm. You know, and so working with reflexology, you're going to build up the basic chemicals that make up your life. And they may not last because their minds take over again, but for a half an hour, for an hour, they feel much better. What happens if you can be well for a half an hour or an hour, your brain picks up on that concept and can say, hey, if I can feel well for a half an hour, I could feel well for a whole day. Yeah, because it, it establishes a new reference point. A right? new reference point, exactly. And then you thirst for that to, to push the reference point a little bit longer and a little bit longer. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, we're sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not just a pretty face. <laughs> So, okay, so the first part talks about uh, the history and, and the application and, and the depression and stuff. Okay, so when when you see all those pictures and the pretty pictures, explain to me that. What, what are we getting into now? Now we're getting into how reflexology works and what the organs do. But it's an alternative view of the organs. It's not your regular anatomy physiology. Oh, explain that. Uh, I, I will. Um, when you have sinus trouble... Most doctors, most practitioners of anything are going to work on your sinuses because you have sinus trouble. Right. As a reflexologist, I know that sinus trouble is not sinus trouble. It's large intestine problems. It's ileocecal valve problems. 
so I'm going to work on your intestines. The reflexologist who is good at his job or her job will know that. They're not going to just work on the symptom. They're going to work on the cause. The cause is really important because as reflexologists, we're not, we're not allopathic, allopathic uh, physicians who just work on symptoms. We work on, on, um, garden, we're gardeners. We gardeners. till the land. Ah. We make the land work well so that you can grow properly. Right? Interesting. So that's the whole concept of that is to show you how each organ affects different parts of the body, not necessarily the one you think. Ah, be darned. Okay. So, yeah. So as we progress through this training, and so you've set it up, so you're teaching the instructors, and the instructors are going to take that, that information to the seniors, right? They're going to take it to the seniors, not to teach them, but oh, to practice. But to practice on And they will also be training new teachers, because this concept is going right across Canada. It's going into all the senior residences across Canada, which is really this is exciting. powerful. Yeah. Because then you get to say... This is, this is what I'm proud of, this is what I do, this is my legacy, this is what makes me get up in the morning. Right? Yeah, yeah, this is my passion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, And that's important too because since I am a senior, I can tell seniors, I can tell students, I can tell teachers, there is something to live for. You can have a passion. I have one. You know. Yeah, yeah. So what was my next question? Oh, oh, hey, hey! Um, a little while ago, you and I were talking about the, these weird um, rules and regulations coming down from the British Columbia government that is going to shut down a whole bunch of you can't buy this herb and you can't buy this herb. And you can't uh, that's happening in the U.S. Okay, well, tell me a little bit more about that too. I don't know too much about it because, in my mind, if you keep harping on the negative you're going to bring the negative right to you. Of course. So it's the kind of thing where where uh, the U.S. and Canada are getting set up to take these things off the market. Now, once they have the bill in place that takes everything off the market, they don't have to act on it, but it's there. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing right now is acting on a bill that was done in 1994. And it's saying that Anything that is pre-1994, you can sell in the store. But anything since then is now done in a new way. And anything that's new, you have to do testing for. And you have to test on over a thousand animals, I believe. So is this, does it, is this included herbs and vitamins and minerals? Yes, or what? The, yes. The whole gamut? The whole the gamut. Whole gamut. So let's say that um, vitamin C is produced in a different way. That makes it a new vitamin, even though it's existed for a long, long time. No. And so you're going to have to test this new vitamin C on a thousand animals at a phenomenal rate of, of um, ingestion, much higher than you would do for yourself. So the animal will be taking maybe 10, 20 times the amount of vitamin C that he normally would be taking if he needed vitamin C. That's going to make him sick. The person will not be able to get through their testing, their research testing. That's terrible. Yeah. And also, it's going to put people, they haven't talked about this, but all the, the, the green people who are involved in animal testing are going to be up in arms. <laughs> I'll bet. Yeah. I'll bet. But that's not going to change anything very much because... We have what they are calling Big Farm.